To recap, Strand Stratton went missing last Tuesday night around 7 o'clock while walking his dog. His dog returned to the house around 8 o'clock without him in the evening. Stratton was found face down in Sunnyside Park Pond the next morning when authorities found him at 6.30 in the morning. As you can see, right now it's snowing and we can expect to see more snow tonight, plus a drop in temperatures. For Murrow News 8, I'm Tia Barnes. The Whitman County Humane Society currently has 12 Shih Tzu mixed puppies that are waiting for a new home. For Murrow News 8, I'm Tia Barnes. You're definitely right, Heather. It really has been chilly out today. If we look at today's, for example, right now it's only 11 degrees outside. Today's high was only about 19 and our average was about 17. So the temperature pretty much stayed the same throughout the day with it being pretty chilly throughout the day. Everybody had their coats on the day on campus because it was cold. The event was going great. They had raised over $1,100, but then it took a turn for the worse. In the middle of a stepping contest or performance, a fight broke out in the middle of the dance floor. For more information about learning disabilities or what the Access Center offers, visit accesscenter.wsu.edu. From Murrow News 8, I'm Tia Barnes. Good evening, I'm Tia Barnes. And I'm Chris Shaw. Thanks for joining us tonight. Pooches of Pullman had an event all to themselves on Saturday. Reporter Brittany Cardoza brings us more on the story. I'll let you decide whether you want to believe in UFOs or not. Strong winds knocked out power for thousands of residents in northern Idaho and Spokane last night. At the height of the blackout, over 2,000 of Vista customers in Sandpoint and the South Hill area in Spokane were without power. <laughs> Hi Cougs, I'm Tia Barnes, your Coug in the Field. Local law enforcement took part in an active shooter drill last night. Pullman and WSU police, along with fire and medical units, worked with volunteers at the Pullman Summit Therapy and Health Services to replicate an active shooter scenario. Some of Disney's new modifications include the option for guests that can't wait in long lines to come back to the park at a later time to enjoy the attractions. The Washington State University College of Nursing is seeing dollar signs after being awarded a $1 million grant. Welcome back. I'm Tia Barnes with your sports for tonight. Halloween won't just be a holiday in Pullman this year. It's game day. The Cougar football team will play at 7.30 p.m. in the nationally televised game on ESPN against the Arizona State Sun Devils. Ski season has officially arrived in western Washington. Both Crystal and Stevens Pass open Saturday for the first ski of the season. New development today regarding the death of a WCU professor, Dr. Scott Stratton. Tia Barnes is in our newsroom with an update. Tia, what can, we, what can you tell us about the WCU professor's cause of death? Well, Tenzin, the cause of death of Stratton was released earlier this morning. To recap, Strand, Stratton went missing last Tuesday night around 7 o'clock while walking his dog. His dog returned to the house around 8 o'clock without him in the evening. Stratton was found face down in Sunnyside Park Pond the next morning when authorities found him at 6.30 in the morning. Today, I interviewed Commander Tennant to give more details on this story. Let's take a look. Uh, the coroner, Pete Martin, did put out a final report. It's list, listing the uh, cause of death for Mr. Stratton as accidental. There is fluid in the lungs. Uh, it was indicating that the actual cause of death was uh, freshwater drowning. However, there is also indications that there was a medical incident prior to that. So most likely um, he had a seizure uh, and then fell into the lake and then drowned. This is the pond at Sunnyside Park. Police believe that Stratton was walking near the pond when he had a seizure and fell in. There was roughly nine hours between the time authorities say he drowned and when his body was found the next day. The family is holding a private funeral. However, a public memorial is scheduled to take place at the Lewis Alumni Memorial Center on March 8th at 1.30. Back to you guys at the desk. It's called Late Night Northside. It's a new service on campus this year. A longtime dining center is adding an after hours component. Students can come in, have fun, and enjoy different foods. We try to offer a variety we just started. So right now what we have is we have for sandwiches, burgers, then palooza pita and wraps, and then the frozen yogurt with a lot of toppings. Late night opens promptly at 8 p.m. every evening, right after the dining hall closes at 7.30. Student employees only have 30 minutes to prepare for late night. It's crazy. We have half an hour to flip the joint, meaning the north side side of it has to close down their operation and clean up and move some of their products out of the way, um, out, of, uh, out of the area so that we can come in and use our uh, products and, and, and whatnot. So uh, the deli area and the grill are the ones that are most affected by this transition. The south side of campus has always had a late night component with flicks. 
Late Night Northside is something that students on the north side and hill side of campus have always wanted. Uh, the student from the north side campus and also from the um, hill hall, they don't want to go all the way down to uh, south side. And so they feel that we need to provide something at the north side campus. My favorite part about Late Night Northside is hanging out with friends and being able to just chill here and eat pro yo and just have a place to chill. Even though Late Night Northside is new this year, they've had a great come out so far. Students on the north side of campus no longer have to travel to the south side of campus to get a late night bite. Between 400 and 500 students eat at Late Night Northside every single night. For Murrow News 8, I'm Tia Barnes. Some WSU students currently reside in hotels around Pullman as a result of the Grove apartment fire this summer. I'm actually been in this hotel because I was supposed to be living in the Grove. I was moving on the 19th, but they put us in a hotel for hopefully just a week, but I've been hearing that it might be longer. Julia signed a lease in spring before the Grove was completed. Now she has nowhere to put her belongings. All my stuff that's supposed to be inside my apartment is actually crammed inside of the hotel, and some of it's still in my car. Fortunately, students don't have to pay the additional hotel cost. The Grove is actually paying for the hotel, but we still have to pay our August rent even though we're not living in there right now. Grove officials say they're working as quickly as possible to get students into their homes. I'm worried for the fact that they're trying to build it so fast. So I've heard for people who do live in the Pullman Grove that they feel like they just slapped the apartments together, so there's there are some problems. The fire damage is estimated at $13 million. It destroyed a total of 88 units. The Grove is still not completely finished. Grove officials are hoping to have the rest of their tenants moved in by early September. Then, they will begin working on the amenities their tenants were promised, such as the pool and the clubhouse. For Murrow 8, I'm Tia Barnes. Not So Average Lecture took place in the Cub Auditorium on Wednesday, November 6. Robert Hastings, noted researcher, has presented to more than 500 universities nationwide on his findings on identified flying objects. That's right, UFOs. Uh, I've spent 40 years interviewing retired military personnel describing very amazing UFO encounters at nuclear weapons sites. The Student Entertainment Board throws over 200 events per school year, with four to six of those events being lectures. The lecture was free for WSU students and $5 for the general public. Very successful. We had 273 people show up, which just, excuse me, 279 people show up, which was um, a very great success. In the presentation, Hastings used slides and a video to show evidence of UFOs. Between the years of 1947 and 1965, Hastings claims there have been a number of UFO sightings and occurrences. Now 65, Hastings leaves the speculation of UFOs to the younger generation. The amount of government secrecy and cover-ups that are happening and that have happened throughout the century pretty much is what I take away most from this presentation. It just really hits home. I'll let you decide whether you want to believe in UFOs or not. For more information about Robert Hastings or UFOs, visit ufohastings.com. Tia Barnes, Murrow News 8. Meet Rita Best. She's just your ordinary college student. Every morning, Rita wakes up, gets ready, and then heads to campus. But you won't see her on exam day in class. Rita takes all her exams in the Access Center, formerly known as the Disability Resource Center. The reason? She has dyslexia. I first found out uh, when I was in high school. Um, my professors were coming to me and we're, we're having meetings with my mom and the uh, principal of the school trying to figure out why my grades weren't as good. Dyslexia is different for everyone. For Rita, it means that reading aloud and comprehending is just more difficult. To increase in, in, in the size of... The Access Center is located right next to Health and Wellness. The center provides students with all types of disabilities the resources that they need to succeed. What Rita needs is extra time and to be alone so she can read her exams out loud to improve her comprehension. We got the four finals. We got one on Tuesday at 1010 for site 312. Yes. And then we got one on another one, same day at 310 for site 265. Yeah. Uh, offers me double timing and on my exams. They offered me a program which read to me um, 
my textbooks, when, uh, any of my reading assignments. Rita's friends and family are very supportive of her learning disability. Girlfriend, she's very helpful whenever I'm reading something or doing homework. Um, she will, I will ask her what does this mean or I'll ask her to proofread my essays. If she asks me about homework or something like that, sometimes I may be like, why don't you get that? But then I understand that like, I just have to help her. Rita's favorite place to study is in the library. She says places like the Cub can be very distracting for her. Nonetheless, Rita doesn't let her learning disability define who she is. For more information about learning disabilities or what the Access Center offers, visit accesscenter.wsu.edu. From Rural News 8, I'm Tia Barnes.